currently a teacher specialist, education, technology, and information services at Glendale Unified School District, where she was the first teacher and curriculum writer for the French dual immersion program in 2012. And she has taught across the spectrum from pre-kindergarten to <laughs> doctoral courses. So here you have somebody who knows uh, preschool. So uh, we always, they ask about this and that they know about early elementary. And outside of the district, Dr. Sun is an independent consultant for a tech uh, integration and dual immersion practices. She's also a part-time lecturer at, California State, at Cal State uh, University uh, in Los Angeles in the Division of Applied and Advanced Studies in Education and a teacher trainer with California World Language Project, the Occidental place, woo! Okay, with that, I'm gonna leave the microphone with her and yes, and enjoy. Let's work with that. We're happy to have you. Hi everybody, good morning, good morning. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's Saturday morning. And you know what we call teachers who join us on Saturdays? We call y'all Saturday teachers. And we love Saturday teachers because it really just goes to show your dedication to the craft. And we're so excited that you are here. We know how hard you're working and distance learning definitely hasn't been easy for every single person. And at the same time, there's been great silver lining with distance learning, right? Like the fact that we can all connect together virtually in these types of conferences to learn together where, you know, maybe there'd be few of, fewer of us or, you know, not as much travel, right? Uh, or we would have to travel, I mean, to be able to attend an event all together. Even though I miss those, I'm super happy to be able to be here virtually with all of you. If you could please join us in Nearpod today, um, I've put the link in the chat for you quite a few times. Join us in there because there are some activities that we are gonna be doing in there. However, if you happen to not want to join us um, or if you are listening to the recording, I want you to pay attention to the um, link to the website or to the slide deck, the actual slide deck that we have, because that is going to help you get access to everything as well, okay? Because there is a student paste Nearpod link, so then you can listen to the recording and follow along in Nearpod at the same time. So you can join us both ways. Um, if you want to pull up the slide deck instead, if you want to be a Nearpod instead, they're kind of embedded everywhere. Okay. All right. So I am going to start sharing my screen with you. And I'm just going to check that you have access to everything. Here you go. So we are talking all about strengthening student engagement today, and especially in dual immersion or in language learning, this is super duper important, right? We do need to engage our students in one way or another. And especially in distance learning, we don't get to have that main physical connection that we would normally like to have. My email and Twitter handle are on there. If you have questions about this, or if you want more information afterward, it is there, okay? All right. Firstly, to access um, Nearpod, for those of you who are on the Nearpod deck, if you don't, if this is your first time with Nearpod, you're not familiar with it, every time you hover over something where you see there is a live link, all you have to do is click on it and then it will open the thing item for you. If you have multiple links, you'll see that there is like a little, you know, it's a rectangle that pops up, okay, around the item. So, you can embed your links in your pod this way, or you don't necessarily have to. On your student view, on this right-hand side, you also see a little bump that has like a little note taker. If you would like to take notes today directly on the slides and have this Nearpod be emailed to you or be saved directly to your Google Drive, you can definitely do that today too. So make sure you click on that little bump if you want to take notes. It is going to ask you if you want to sign in into Google or if you want to sign in into Microsoft um, OneDrive. One way or another, whichever technology you prefer to use, that is one way for you to take notes. If you're like, oh, I really like this idea on this particular slide, that is definitely possible, okay? 
So two ways to join us. I see there are 29 of you in here in my Nearpod with me, but there are 51 participants. So Iman or Lena, if you could please drop the link in there for everyone again, that would be wonderful. Join us in this Nearpod, okay? And those of you who are in here, you probably have realized too that it's teacher paced. So it's moving along as I'm moving on, um, as I'm moving along, your slide is moving along too. So if you have a hard time, you're like, where should I focus? Should I focus on my Zoom? to see your face, or should I focus on Nearpod? I would say if you want to minimize Zoom, you are more than welcome to minimize Zoom. And you can just hear what is going on in Nearpod because that is exactly what I'm gonna be talking about, okay? So you have lots of choices this morning and here are our norms. You know, we have yourselves on mute. So then we have the least amount of distractions possible. Use the chat. If you have questions, Iman and Lena are going to be fielding all of your questions. They're going to be looking at um, providing you with links in the chat as well, but you have access to all of the links if you are already in Nearpod with us too. Okay. So just both ways know that you could be there. We're going to work on being positive because it is technology and some of us are more tech savvy than others. Um, and that's okay. And distance learning, we need all the grace we could possibly get, right? So we wanna be patient and we wanna be positive with each other. Those are our norms. All right, our agenda, we've got a packed day. We got from 9.45 all the way until 12.30, you are gonna have a break, but we got some attendance going on. We got edge protocols, we got thin slides. We're gonna talk about how you can increase your use of Google Slides or PowerPoint, whichever tool it is that you use. We're gonna talk about how we can fray your friend. And I'm gonna give you a French lesson. You could see how these lessons can actually all be added together. We're gonna to talk about integrating culture. We'll finish off with eight parts, which is another edge of protocols. And then we will close out the day, okay? And so attendance. I would love, love, love for all of you to click on the attendance form. So you are hanging out in your pod. All you got to do is click on this link and it will bring you to this Google form right over here. Okay. It is simply going to ask you to put in your email address. And I'm asking you to put your email address in twice because sometimes we make mistakes. Um, and just put in your first name, your last name, this attendance sheet is going to be used to generate your um, certificate at the end of the day. So please, please, please be sure you are typing in your name as you would like for it to appear. Sometimes people ask me, they're like, Valerie, it didn't come up like there is a typo in there. And I'm like, well, we all make mistakes. <laughs> so just be sure that you are putting your name in this attendance form right now as your registration or, you know, and you'll see why I need this information in just a little bit. So if I see that there are three of you who have responded, please come on in and continue to respond to this. And if you're like, Valerie, I don't have access to the form just yet. Here is the link to the form. Iman is so on top of it, she's dropped the form in there for you. So go ahead and put your name in there. And while we are waiting for everybody to put their name in there, I see that all of you are from all sorts of different places, all in California, you teach different levels. It's just happy for me to, I'm just happy to be here with you. <laughs> that is your one goal if you wanna drop it in the chat right now. One thing that you would love to do during your holiday break. We're like so close, we've got five days, right? Some of these tools that you can use today, you could definitely use next week. So go ahead, drop in the chat. What would you like to do? What are you looking most forward to during your winter break? Nothing, Yusuf, yes, doing absolutely nothing. We got sleep, walk, hike, just chilling. We need those like two and a half, two weeks break, right? I don't know how long y'all have. I have two weeks. Um, bake, yes. I can't wait to just open up a book and read. I haven't read for pleasure for myself 
since I think since the pandemic started. So it's just been like busy, 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 go, go, go. Partir en vacances. Amira, yes. Il faut partir en vacances. We got to, right? I don't know where we could go right now, but I'm like, I'm happy just to go out and drive somewhere. You know, just like without a destination, just go out and drive and then come back at some point, right? That would be really nice. Um, I see there are 26 of you who have responded. Um, come on in, just put your name in there. You're probably looking for the address of your school. That was like a trick question that we kind of threw in there. Um, but thank you, thank you for completing this form, enjoying your nature. Yeah, the form doesn't open. Um, Iman El Zaini, which what are which? It doesn't thing? open. Salam alaikum. I don't know what to do. Oh, uh, which doesn't open the form or? Form, yeah, the form. I can't write my name and do it. That's weird. Here, here is. Well, are you are you using the same email that you or the Gmail account or the email? The same email I logged in. Yeah. And it won't let you go in. That's interesting. Can you, can you tell me the steps? Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Just click the on that. Just click on the link. Click I did. The form. I did. I did many times. Huh? Well, how about this? I'll turn off collect emails. Okay. Um, try it again. Try it again so that you can give it a try. Just know that now you only have one email that you're putting in. Um, you just got to make sure that you're typing it in correctly. Okay. All right. So we've got 33 people in here. All is good. We're going to move on from here. Um, keep putting in your name. If you have not signed into the attendance form yet, know that on here on Nearpod, you can just click on the attendance form and because we want you to get your certificate of participation at the end, right? So definitely do that. Okay. I'm sorry, it's still Me too. Work. I couldn't uh, sign, please. Oh, oh, oh! You also couldn't sign in. Yeah. Um, that's it. Hmm. It it does ask you to be logged into Google, so that could be an issue. I did refresh it um, to make it not collect email addresses anymore. So. Yeah, try a different browser. Maybe that'll work for you um, because I did just turn it off. So it shouldn't be a block anymore, or I hope not, right? All right, so let's get to know you. But more than just what grade level you teach. The next protocol that I am gonna show you is an edge protocol called thin slides. And you're like, Valia, what exactly is a thin slide and what are edge protocols, right? Edge protocols is a book written by John Carippo and Marlena Heburn. They are incredible techie educators who was like, you know, instead of teachers preparing 180 different lessons every single year, he's like, Sports teams don't do that. Nobody does that, right? What they, like sports teams, like football players, even like the best football team, they have maybe 20 plays, right? And they just have variations based off of that play. So he's like, what if we as educators created our 20 best lessons, but they are lesson frames or lesson structures and all we have to do as educators is put in the content. The variation is in the content that we put in, but the process of doing these things is always the same. Because then in terms of cognitive load, our students would be like, oh, I know this process. So if I know this process, then they can really spend the time to process the content, right? If we know, if we have new content and a new process every single time, even the best lesson could be really tough because there's too many things going on at once. So John Carippo is also a, <laughs> he was a football coach for a little bit. So he was like, he used this football analogy. So thin slides is a protocol where you just put in 
one word and one picture every single time. He gives his about five minutes to find that word, to think of the word, and to find that picture. It's thin slides because it is done on Google Slides, okay? And they could decorate and show their, demonstrate their creativity within the slides. So what I'm gonna ask you to do right now is you are on this collaborative board. So I was thinking about this yesterday, on this collaborative board, this is my adaptation, right? Um, you are going to put in your one post. So come and take a look at my screen right now. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this, okay? If it's your first time using Nearpod, come on over. This is like a Padlet in a way. At the very bottom right over here, you have your um, text box, right? So I am going to put in my name, okay? And with my name, I'm also gonna add in one adjective that describes me. And my adjective that describes me is going to be multilingual, multicultural. I'm gonna put a multicultural instead. And I'm gonna add in one picture. You're like, Valerie, how do I add in a picture on this item? You have your little picture frame right over here. You're gonna click on it. You can drop in a picture if you have something that you can't find, or you could do your Google search. And I am all about Care Bears right now. Um, Care Bear Stare. I'm just gonna put that in there and I'm gonna search for this. That's the one that I like. I'm gonna click save. And now I'm gonna click post. So now I have my name, I have the word that describes me and I also have my picture. So go ahead, I am gonna give you since this is on the collaborate board, I'm gonna give you three minutes to do this. And I live off of my timer, so I'm gonna put this on my timer right now and let you put in your information. If you have any technical difficulties or you need me to review it, please, please, please let me know. And I am more than happy to give you the help that you need. Once again, for those of you who are not joining us on your pod, we are right over here. That is not the right link. We are right over here in Nearpod in the chat. So join us in Nearpod, please. So Rana, great job. I would like for you to add in there your one adjective that describes you and then add in a picture as well. Sahar, great job. Ooh, Rana, you are amazing. Thank you so much for adding that. So I am going to delete your first one, okay? Sahar, great job. Ooh, I love this. And as you can see, you can go through, if you see somebody whose photo you really liked, give them a heart, right? Encourage them. Kura, I love the picture that you chose. Awesome. Sahar, good morning. Yes. Coffee first, right? But first, coffee. Iman, I love that picture that you have. And when you are ready, well, we've still got two more minutes. So go ahead and put this information in there. Manal uh can you edit if you have um you are not post? Able to edit, unfortunately okay. not in your pod you are not able to edit okay so you could just put in a new one it's okay you know rim i love that you have the distance learning playbook it is like the go-to book right now yes it is like such a great resource to everything that we are doing in distance learning. Nor fantastic, I challenge you to put in a picture on your um, response. Oh, Dana, good morning. I love those empathetic hearts. Storyteller, Meral, that is fantastic. Are you passionate? Yes. That is a beautiful picture you have right here. Go ahead, you can like things that people have liked. Did I put my heart on there? I did, okay. 
in just a time check, you've got about 50 seconds. So those of us, those of you who are not yet in Nearpod, please, please, please join us in Nearpod. I only see 40 of you when there are 55 of you in this meeting. So join us in Nearpod. Please. Is there anyone who has this problem? I cannot, act, the text box is not active. I cannot yeah. type there. You cannot type there. Um, yeah, I don't know if anyone else has the same problem or just me. Can you refresh to see what it's like? Um, I'll try, yeah. Yeah, maybe that. Uh... So this is what my- Oh, yes, now I can. Now you can. Yeah, when I refresh. Great, great, great. Yes, make sure, oh, there goes my timer. So. Can you try one more time? Because I tried to type my name and it did not work. Can you tell me what you did, please? Yeah. So you're just going to click on this little refresh button and then just refresh the page. It's technology. Okay, thank you. It's <laughs> new for me, all new. Not a problem. It does happen and it's all good. That's why like one of the norms is be patient, be positive, right? Because technology can always be a little funny. And this is the same thing that our students are gonna go through. So it's okay, you know? So I am just going to randomly choose a one or two people. And what I'm gonna ask you to do is I'm gonna ask you to unmute and you have about 15 seconds to share your word and your picture. I am obviously, because as a good teacher, you always model first, right? So I am going to model for you my expectation. Okay, so hi everybody. My name is Valerie and I chose the word multicultural because when people ask me like what ethnicity I am, I tell them that I am born Taiwanese. By nationality, I am American, but I am French at heart because I lived there for so long. And being a world languages teacher, I now have access to all of these different people and I just feel like I'm a multicultural person. I can't stick to one. Next, I am going to have Nime, Nime, can you please unmute and share with us your picture and who you are? Thank you so much, Nime. And please tell me if I'm saying your name wrong. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Nima Musa I'm from Arizona. I teach at Arizona State University, college level uh, Arabic and cultural classes, and I'm passionate about learning. I love learning, I love uh, teaching my students, and I'm passionate about that. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you just helped me realize I didn't explain my picture. <laughs> um, I chose the Care Bear Stare because I think in this time of the pandemic, all of us need to gather together and really do that Care Bear Stare together to scare all the scaries away, right? That's why I chose that picture. So Nima, can you please share with us your picture? Okay, so I chose this picture because I'm passionate about learning. So it's the same as gardening. So I, I love to see my uh, you know, students who grow and learn the language. So I, I love to see them in stages. Yeah, thank you so much. And that is such a great analogy. I didn't, I haven't thought of learning as gardening in, in quite a while. So thank you. For and that. I love gardening too. <laughs> so it's like a double, uh -huh. a double meaning picture. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, next, I have Lena. Lena, can you unmute and share with us who you are, your picture and your word. Can you say which, which we Lina? have too many Linas. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Lena Hamoud, this is my picture. This is Lena Hamoud. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, good morning, everyone. I chose this because you know the commitment when you teach the kids, when you have to be prepared for your lesson plan, prepare your uh, slides, what you plan to do, because there is no time while you are online go prep or go bring something. So you have everything all around you and you start one step at a time and to make sure every, you finish your class on the right time. And at the same time, engage the kids with you and make it fun and interesting. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Lena. That is, yes, everything takes time, right? But we gotta make it a celebration. Yes. We gotta get them excited. So my desk all around me, just my classroom, I spin my chair and grab it and show it to the kids. And just, you know, if I need to show something, it just, Everything all around me. I can move around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a beauty to be creative when you have online learning and teaching. 
Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Nina. Next, we have Safa. Safa, can you please, oh, you don't have a word, but it's okay. You are going to share with us your one word and talk about why you chose this picture. Go for it, Safa. Safa, are you with us? Safa or Safa? It's okay, let's go on to another person. Okay, Safa, if you were here, please come back and join us. Um, Alam, Ma- I, I don't want to say your name and mispronounce it. Makbula. <laughs> Makbula Alam, Makbula, yes. please share with us. Uh, yes, my name is Nakbul Alam. I am teaching here at Santa Clara in the Bay Area. I'm teaching uh, in Granada Islamic School. I am a very social person. I love people. I love to be around people. That's why I love teaching, because I want to interact with people. I love camping, walking. I love nature a lot. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Makbula. I that- your picture is beautiful. So as you can see, this is thin slides. Usually in my own classroom, I would give my students like 15 seconds to talk through everything, right? So then everybody gets to share. And this is an important part because as language teachers, what do we need to do for our students? We need to let them talk, right? They can't just use the language passively. And with this, you're like, but Valerie, this was like super duper easy. It's just my name and a picture. What if I were to ask you to do this in your target language, in a language that you're not sure of? What would your students need then, right? I could have said, ladies and gents, today we're going to do everything in French, and you're going to present yourself using bonjour, je m'appelle, right? So then you give them that sentence frame, and everybody's going to practice, like I would say, everybody repeat with me, je m'appelle, je m'appelle, and then you would have to say, je m'appelle Valérie, or je m'appelle Lina, je m'appelle Iman. And then you would say, and then the next sentence would be like, I chose this picture, you know, or I chose the picture blank. Okay. So I don't mind if some of my kiddos use English from time to time, because what they, whatever it is that they say in English, I say it back to them in French, and then they have to repeat after me. There's like a whole repeat after me game, right? So their presentations are definitely a lot shorter because it is done in a language that they don't know. But it gives them a chance to practice and it gives them a chance to use the sentence frames that I am trying to reinforce every single day. It doesn't just have to be a name. The beauty of Edu protocols is they're like, oh, when I see this, I'm gonna, they, when they see thin slides, they know that it is one image, one word, right? So what if I am working on a vocabulary deck right now? How many of you, just give me a thumbs up if you have spent two hours creating a vocabulary deck for your students. How many times have your students, especially the middle school students go like, ew, why'd you choose that picture? Right? So what if, before starting your session, before starting your unit, and you're like, ladies and gents, we are going to be talking about houses for these next three weeks. You can use Google Translate if you want to, but I want you to give me one word that you think is really, really important that has to, be, that has to do with the house. Maybe it's bedroom. Maybe it's sofa, maybe it's door, maybe it's sofa, you know, sofa, maybe it's kitchen, maybe it's bathroom, maybe it's bathtub, whatever it is, whatever it is that has to do with the house, right? They get five minutes. They're going to put the word that they would like, that they think is important. And if they don't know the word yet, you're like positively using Google Translate, right? look up the word for bathtub, or you could say it's in your book, right? Make a good reference to the good old textbook too, if you use a textbook, you can use one of these words. And now you've got your word, 
you've got an image that the student picked out themselves that is appropriate, right? It is relevant to them, so they can't give you the feedback of like, ooh, yeah, I don't like the picture you chose. So it is a vocabulary deck now that is relevant to them, words that are relevant to them. And you as a teacher, you could be like, oh, you know what? We're talking about the house, but none of you talked about the like upstairs or downstairs. And that's something that we really need to know. You as a teacher, now you just got to supplement that in, right? You're not going to have to spend hours and hours. Or for the kiddos who are like really having a hard time choosing a word, like, like I don't know, I have to choose just one word. Which word do I choose? The critical thinking that's going on right here is pretty darn important, right? So you as a teacher can just supplement. And when they are presenting, you know, sentence frame. Voici un, this is a, or voici une, c'est un, c'est une, this is a, it is a, whatever, right? You use your sentence frame that you want them to practice. I always throw in an adjective in there for my students. So they can't just say, this is a bathroom. They have to say, this is a pretty bathroom. This is a white bathroom. This is a useful bathroom. This is a whatever bathroom, right? They throw in that extra adjective in there. For the more advanced students, you can say, this is the kitchen in the house. So you could throw in a prepositional phrase in there, right? This is a sofa. This is a pink sofa in the house. So now they're practicing these sentence frames you have for them using a vocabulary deck that they are committed to because they're the ones who created it. And how long did it take? It's a five minutes worth of exercise for them. You teachers, no more, like now you have your Saturday nights free, right? You're no longer spending two hours creating a vocabulary deck for your students, you know? This works for all units. And you're like, Valerie, this is on a collaborate board in Nearpod though. How would I like export it out, you know, or like share it with people, right? You have this really awesome share button that you can provide for your students. You could just give them a link right over here. And this is a link that they can have access to. If you want to post it in social media, you're more than welcome to post it in social media if that's something that you use for your class, or you can email it to them. I usually, if I do that, I email it to myself and then I email it out to people, but I usually post the link into Google Classroom or whatever classroom management system it is that you use. It's here like this, but if you are a Google Slides user, you could definitely do this in Google Slides too. This was like my last minute genius that I came up with yesterday because I was like, there's gonna be so many people in here, like lots of different things to access, right? But just another thing with Nearpod, right over here, everything is posted by time, but some of you have shown likes. So come over to my Nearpod, to my Zoom screen, my Zoom shared screen, and I wanna show you, um, in using Nearpod, I, I didn't tell you this today because you're not my students in the long term, right? But usually for my students and I have them named, I always have them named last name, first name. This way, when I need to check through work, it's already in my roster order. And so the first two weeks that I use Nearpod, I'm always like, all right, make sure you got last name, first name. And my students don't get any credit if they didn't put their names in correctly. But like first day, they forget, right? They're like, oh my gosh, I didn't put in the name correctly. They didn't get points that day for participation. But the next day, if they do put in their names correctly, I'm like, oh, you know what? Halima, I really, really like that you paid attention this time and you corrected your mistake. So you get points for today and we'll make up points for you the second day or for the previous day. So now they're like, oh, she actually cares and she gave me that credit, you know? So this is like your automatic encouragement for them, right? So I put things, you could put it in alphabetical order, last name, first name, so that you can just go off your checklist really, really quickly. Or if you're talking to your students about important ideas or vocabulary words, like what's the most favorite thing that you liked and they've been liking everything, I can also do this according to likes. So I was like, ooh, Iman's photo got 11 likes. So maybe we'll talk about Iman's picture first, right? And then Dana's got 10. So up to you as a teacher and how you want to use this in Nearpod. Nearpod is such a powerful tool. 
um, that it has all of these different items for you to do, okay? But just in case, you're like, Valerie, let's take a look at what it would look like in the slide deck. Here we are, okay? You're like, well, here are three links. If you hover over this and you click on it, they're like, we got a blue link, a pink link, and a yellow link. How do I know which one I'm gonna hop to? I'm gonna show you right now. There is a tool called Flippity. So you see how all of your names are right over here. All of you have signed in, right? I got all of your names right over here. So what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna copy all of your names. And here is my Flippity list. This is my random name picker. I am gonna put all of your names in here, okay? And I'm gonna get the link. Here is my link right over here. That is going to bring you directly to a randomized name picker. So maybe you have your class roster and check out the top part of this. You got a spinner, you got a single name, you got a lineup, groups of three, groups of four, groups of five. I am no longer the ones choosing my groups, right? I don't have to spend my hours and hours doing this. This is fun, this is random. I am not showing any form of preference whatsoever. We're gonna split up into three teams. So I got two teams, I got three teams. So here I am with three teams. So here are my three teams. So now you know which one you're going to. Ooh, they gave me different colors today. When I used it yesterday, it was yellow, pink, and blue. <laughs> now it's green. So if you are in the green group, what I would like for you to do is hop on over in your Nearpod and click on the one that says yellow, okay? If your name is under the pink one, I would love for you to click on pink. If your name is in the blue row, I would love for you to click on the blue. And if you're like, Valerie, I wasn't on this attendance list, pick any random color you would like, okay? This is just a way so that we don't clog up Google Slides and Google Slides makes it a little funky when you have too many people working on it all at once, right? So I'm gonna give you another moment to figure out which team you are on. If you are either, so team green, you were gonna be yellow today. Blue, you stay as blue. Pink, you stay as pink. This is just so we don't have, um, it's Can you not please fun. repeat this? Sorry, sorry, I missed the first part. Um, how I used Flippity? No, no, can you uh, repeat this? I missed the first part. Oh, you're gonna look for your name on one of these lists. Um, and if your name is on here, you are going to click on in your pod. If, you are, if your name was under the green row, you're gonna click on yellow, okay? If your name is in the pink row, you're gonna click on pink. And if your name is in the blue row, you're gonna click on the blue link. And just in case you're not sure of which link to access, here, I'm gonna copy this in for you. Boom. Okay. So go ahead and join us and you should be able to see us right over here. I got some folks in the blue team. I got some folks in the pink, fantastic, y'all are doing great. So you can see this is what it looks like in a Google Slides, right? And I basically have take a slide below and you're like, well, Valerie, how do I, how do my students know which slide to take? Because they can't just go in and take any random slide, right? Well, just like I run my class by a timer, I also run my class by roster numbers, okay? So my first three slides are always usually taken because I have my title slide, right? I have my sample, and then I have the take a slide below because sometimes my kiddos try to take my own slide or they try to take the title slide. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't take those slides, okay? Especially when I'm doing professional development. So it's always like take a slide below, you take, choose anyone you want. My student who is my roster number four, take slide number four. My student who was roster number five, take slide number five. I had 26 kiddos in my class. So whoever was number one took slide 27. 
Whoever was number two took slide 28, and whoever was number three took slide 29. This helps me know exactly who is working where. And so while they have those five minutes, I put my slide deck on gallery view, or I can't zoom into it. Uh oh. So here is grid view. I don't know if most of you have noticed under Google Slides, you could put things on grid view over here. Okay. And so on grid view, then I can see during my five minutes, I can see exactly who's working where. Judo's not my number 15. So I'm like, huh, Jude's little box isn't even there yet. So I can private message him I'm like, Jude, what's going on? Do you need some help? Maybe he's like, oh, I'm still searching for a picture. I'm almost there, you know, or something. Or I can call him out, right? I could private message him or I could call him out in my Zoom. And then this, even if his video is not on, I could be like, oh, you know what? Maybe he's there and he's just not participating, you know? So for those of you who are here, I just want you to come on over and just pick any random slide because we are about to learn how you can up your game, okay? So I am going to take my slide right over here. I'm gonna bring this back to normal mode. I am gonna take you to a tool called Unscreen. Sorry, Oh, we haven't debriefed here yet, but it's okay. Um, we're going to go to remove.background first. Remove.bg is this amazing tool that helps remove backgrounds from your pictures. So sometimes you want to use a really good picture, but then your background is a different color, right? And then you have that entire white space behind it, or there's like things that you have focus on that isn't necessarily something you want to have focus on. Remove.bg is like magic and it takes away the background directly for you. You're like, Valerie, how does it work? So um, I love nachos, but we're going to go for Chinese lanterns. So I search for the picture that I want. Okay. I hop on over to images and I'm like, ooh, you know what? This, hmm, this is a cool picture that I want to use. Maybe I'm talking about Chinese New Year and I want to use this picture. I right click and I click on copy image or copy image address, whichever one you would like. I come on over to remove.bg and I am just on this website. I don't have to be anywhere else. And I click paste and it does its magic. Give it a few more seconds and boom, I got pictures now with no background. And I once again, right click, copy image, and I am just gonna hop on over to my edge protocols right over here. And I paste it in and now I have these items without any background to them. It is absolutely magical. It makes your slides look better. It may make your students vocabulary deck look better. It is just overall kind of beautiful. So I'm gonna give you a few seconds to give it a try. Take whichever slide it is that you have on your deck. You're like, you know, put your name down and make it your slide, right? Because we're gonna be working on this slide for three different items, okay? So put in your item, I am gonna give you two minutes to give this a try. And once again, the link is remove.bg. And you can take any picture you want if you want. I, I post it, I post the link. Thank you, Iman. Um, and yes, Makbola, you can definitely type in transparent pictures, but sometimes we don't always get those. Even some of the transparent pictures don't have a transparent background. So this is just one way. And then this, I can like, I'm gonna let you work first and not talk because I want you to concentrate on working. Just a reminder, if you have any questions, just you can post it in the chat box. In. You've got about one more minute. Ooh, Kristen, that is a great picture. Did you just, Kirsten, sorry. Um, did you just put that in there? That's not the right one. We're gonna 
in some transparent pictures. So Lena, this picture that you have right here, you can get rid of the background, right? Oh, this is a nice one, Dana. And here we've got, ooh, Lena K, you got a nice one right there. So go ahead and just find a picture, any picture that you would like and pop it in. So the picture has to be on the desktop or from the uh, it Google? From, it could be from anywhere. Um, I just use it. I just do a random search like this. Um, and I just copy the image. And then I just paste it in. Um, also, Valerie, if I may interact, uh, inter <laughs> here. Uh, from the Google slide that you picked as a group, yellow or pink, on the slide itself that you choose, you can just click insert and it will give you a choice to from your own computer or from the web or from anywhere. So you can, I mean, it's as simple as that. It's so yes. easy um, instead of going to a different browser or whatever. Even for our students, you can walk them through this. It's very important what Valerie is saying, but as also modeling for them or what to do step-by-step step before they start working on this kind of projects, it's uh, very important. Yes, that is very true, Lena. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, I do show my students how they can learn to insert in pictures first. Um, I just find this remote, being able to remove a background to be a really powerful tool. So then now I've just started learning like the kin some of the kindergartners and first graders that I get to work with now within the district. I now teach them like, oh, you know, let's go over here and let's let's find a picture and then learn to remove the background, right? And then so I'm also just teaching them different tech skills that they could have. Um, and so now I have a plate of nachos with no background on there, right? And it makes my pictures a little bit more interesting, makes my slides look a little cleaner. Um, so it's just a good tool to have, okay? And so, uh, 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 this is Hadia. Uh, when we get the picture from the remove background, uh, mm -hmm. do we download it? Uh, you don't have to download it. You can just click right click and then copy image. I see. Okay, okay, excellent. And then you can just put it over. And okay. sometimes like the their technology has gotten a lot better where it's removed mostly everything, right? But just in case they didn't, or there are parts that you want to remove more, you can click on edit and you can go to erase or restore. And so you see, I could be like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna erase more of this, right? So you can go through and actually clean things up if you want to, okay? Um, or if it's a picture of your students, like one of my kindergarten friends, she had all of her students' parents take a full body picture of them. She taught them how to remove the background. And so now every week, her students go on a field trip in Google Slides. Oh. And so their job is today I am in whatever, right? And so they get to travel everywhere. And then she's like, and she already has the idea of when they're gonna talk about careers, they're gonna put them in different locations. You know, like when I grow up, I want to be blank, right? Or on the farm today, I'm working with pigs, I'm working with cows. And then so they could actually use their whole body picture in these different settings. So, you know, it being able to take out that background, she was like a totally game in how she uses, um, how she would use Google Slides with her family. So it's like two step copy and paste because when you go to the remove background you have to choose the pictures either upload or either uh, copy and paste and mm -hmm. then after you remove the background you have another step you have another copy step and, paste and move it to the uh, slide exactly so you want to copy the image here again and then you want to bring it over to your slide that you want to use okay thank you there you go and then you just paste it in so uh but first you have to save the image 
save as, not just copy. Because you don't have to. You don't have to save the image unless you want to save the image. You can just directly copy over. So this saves me from having all sorts of images. So like for this picture, I basically just click copy image, and then I bring it over and I paste it in. And then so it's doing its magic. And then the background has been removed. And then once again, I copy the image and then I bring it over here and then I paste it. So this removes me from having to do any form of saving because yeah, I don't have anything saved down here, right? Um, um, remind you again why we want to remove the background. It makes your slides look a little cleaner. Sometimes you have a background color and then you have an image that has like a white thing around it, right? Um, I just find it, it makes your slides look prettier. Um, sometimes it's a little bit more relevant. It lets you travel to different places depending on how you're using the pictures. Um, but it's, it's not for everybody. This is just one trick that you can use. Maybe some of your students would like to use this tool, okay? Um, it is definitely more efficient with less keystrokes. Yeah. Oh, somebody made the background color change for everybody. <laughs> That's all good. All right. So this is remove.bg. The next one, um, this is stuck because I actually made my jiffies move. So you can actually see um, what Nearpod did. Nearpod made everything non-movable, right? So on your slides, if you would like to have things that you're like, you know, that things are being pointed to, like in particular, um, but I'm just using Google Slides and I'm telling my students to like click this link. I actually have a moving arrow that says click this link and it brings their attention to things more often. And so I do this. So you're like, Valerie, what is the purpose of this? This is just fun. Um, sometimes I ask my students to show me how you're feeling in a GIF. And so they were able to show me how they're feeling in a GIF. They actually record a little video of themselves. They remove the background of their video and it's them like dancing around or they're like, blah, 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 you know, they, they just kind of have fun with it. So you're like, Valerie, what is the purpose of this, right? So here is Unscreen. This is from the same creators as um, remove.bg. And so what you do is you take a video and then you remove the background. Maybe they're dancing, but now they're dancing in their classroom. Now they are dancing, even though the video was taken from their homes, right? Um, so I'm just gonna search in Jiffy. I'm gonna, ooh, you know what? This cat looks really awesome. I really like this dog. So I'm gonna choose this dog. And so once again, it goes through its own process, right? Um, and now I'm going to have this really happy dog that could be in my classroom, that could be somewhere around the world, that could be anywhere and everywhere, and it makes me happy. So here it is. Here is this dog where you see its tail wagging. The only thing with Unscreen is that when you you have to download this instead. You can't just, it's not like remove.bg where you can just copy and paste things over. But here I am, I have my really happy dog on my slide and my happy dog is right over here. And it's just like, are you as happy as a dog? You know, um, this makes sense depending on how you want to use it. But if you're not, if you're like, this isn't interesting for me, it's all good. This is just one extra tool that is there, right? Maybe you have, you're able to, you're talking about different ways of saying or having hand gestures to different actions, right? You can actually record yourself doing this, but then remove the background so that it looks a little cleaner, right? Because sometimes we're like, oh, you know, like we have a different background going on or we don't like what's going on in the background. You know, it just makes things look a little different. So I am gonna give you would you like to have some time to practice doing this, like two minutes to try this? Or you're like, mm, not really for me and I wanna move on to something different. Uh, yeah, Valerie, let's do that. And then take, if they have questions okay. and then take a break. It's almost 
10 minutes to 10 40. Okay. 10 minutes break. That'd be awesome. Okay. So I am going to give you, let's practice. let's practice. I'm going to give you two minutes to practice. So you can just go directly to um, unscreen. Okay. And then you can search a GIF right over here. So you could be like, happy dance, right? Maybe you're working with the younger kiddos and you wanna put in this Elmo happy dance because it's gonna be Thursday or it's gonna be Friday or Saturday or whichever day it is, you're just doing a happy dance. And there's Elmo doing its happy dance. Uh, Valerie, you mentioned something about that uh, with, through, through Nearpod that you do not have uh, like the moving, especially if you have actually um, uh, like coming the lines that come after each other. Is there a way that we can have it or uh, we make it, um, you know, we don't close the animation? Um, there is no way to add animation into Nearpod, unfortunately, because what they do is they take a screen, they take a screenshot of what is on the screen. Mm -hmm. So okay. there is no I just wanted to ask because animation sometimes is really important and mm -hmm. it's either or. Either, yeah. <laughs> it's either or and many people have written to Nearpod to um, you know, to to ask for help. Mm -hmm. but it is what it is. I mean, there is a go around where you can save each of these images or GIFs that you create, right? And then you link it back into your slide so then they can see it, you know? So this, uh, this remove, like, you know, the, the app you talk about, it's we have to, to sign in and pay, right? No, 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 no. Please don't sign in and pay. This is free. <laughs> you no, don't because it says sign up free. So does it mean that we, when we sign in, like, you know, when we... Um, you don't have to sign in at all. Um, mm -hmm. I actually prefer to not sign in. I just use it. And um, everything in here, whatever. So if you... I don't sign in simply because the less logins of things I have, the better I feel, right? Because I'm like- Because no, no I'm, try, I'm trying. So it says download full image. It says one credit, what are credits, then get this image for free, sign up for free. Uh, I have never gotten to that page before, Amal. <laughs> I don't know, this is you like are a the instructions. Um, I usually just, I just copy paste it in and click download. So the, yeah, I have the same issue here. Um, it's asking to log in or sign in. I can't see much images. Like, you know, I was lucky to find that one. Uh -huh. That's it. Um, I'm actually not sure what, how to respond because I have never. I, I, I think you've gone through sign in, just ignore, don't see anything, just click in. And when you see the box where it's having the, the, the video or the picture, just put it or the pictures, just put it in there. That's it. Yeah. Don't sign in. Don't, yeah, don't click log don't in. Don't click anything, log in or anything, ignore it. Uh, dear Valerie, just... I have a question. Yes, Dana. Yes, uh, so how many ways we can move pictures from Giphy to unscreen? So do we have always to unload, uh, to download them or can we just grab them? And you know, I'm having just difficulty at this task. Um, you can't just grab it, unfortunately. You, for these Giphy, the movement ones, you do yes. have to download. Okay. So um, what I do like is the fact that when I download it, it shows up directly right down here, right? So then whatever slide it is that I am on, I just go on and I just drag and drop. So I just drag and I drop it in and it's there. Um, and then I just use whatever is right down here for me. So from Giphy to unscreen first, right? Yes. So we have to download it from Giphy and then uh, upload it to unscreen? This is my question. Oh, no, you don't have to. So if you're on okay. jiffy.com, 
-hmm. and you're like dance, right? Okay. So I usually just take the link. So you see, there's a link right there. I click the on link the link on top. Mm -hmm. okay. So on top of each picture, there's like a little link that you can have right beside the heart. Okay. I click on the link and it says link copied. Okay. And then I just bring it over here and I click paste. So I don't download the original one. I just click on the link. So then it gets copied and then I bring it over to you paste it in the square in the middle. I right. can paste anywhere. Okay. As Perfect. long as you're Thank on you. this website, you just click paste um, and then it'll do it for you. Wonderful. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. So it makes the system easy. It saves you from downloading. It saves you from, um, yeah. you know, from the only download that you do need to do is now that it is done, now that the background has been removed, you have to download it. Okay. Um, but then the download is, is pretty easy peasy. And then you just pop it in. So here is my end screen. Boom. Now I got my little dancing person, right? Uh, Valerie, I think if we can just finish the one with the recording and then we can start later on. I am assuming after that we have the French lesson. Yes. So when after the break, we can go directly to the French lesson. How about that? That sounds good. Okay. Okay. So now we are, we're just going to use the, we are going to use voice recorder. Okay. You're like, Valerie, why do we want to use an online voice recorder? So I put in list, listen here because on my actual slide deck, you can see right down here. If I just clicked here, I can, here's my voice. You get a little symbol of like listening to your voice, right? And here it is like, hello, everybody. My name is Valerie and it is a pleasure to meet you. So my students can create slides either, whether it's on thin slides, whether, whether it's on Google slides, I mean, um, or for whatever activity it is that they are explaining. If they don't want to go over to Flipgrid, a lot of my students are like, we're tired of Flipgrid. We don't want to record my face anymore. I know you just want to hear my voice. Online voice recorder is kind of like the, the thing, right? And you can also make it into a Jiffy as well. So you see if I hover over it, you know, it's the same thing. It's just now that it's a picture of, it's a moving picture that I could click on that also speaks. How do I get there? You're gonna go to online voice recorder. From online voice recorder, you accept the cookies. And if it's your first time here, it's gonna say, well, um, provide access to your microphone, okay? And the steps are super duper easy. Hop on over to my Zoom so you can see what I am doing. It is just the middle button that you want to use. I'm going to introduce myself in French, OK? Bonjour, je m'appelle Valérie. Enchantée. Je suis contente de vous rencontrer. And so now I have clicked stop. I have this entire clip. And look. I can see where I can edit my clip if I want to, because I see there's like a little dead space in, in the middle, right? Or on my two ends, I can play it. De vous rencontrer. Bonjour, je m'appelle Valérie. Enchantée. Je suis contente de vous rencontrer. So there it is. I click save. It saves. It gets downloaded right here. Okay. Here is the tricky part with online voice recorder. You have to put it in a space where it is easily shared with everyone. So what I do is I actually have a folder that is called voice recordings. This is a place where I keep all of my recordings that I have. I have this folder and then I have another folder. I have like audio recordings because I forgot that I used voice recordings. This folder has its share settings turned on. So currently my share setting for this is anyone on the internet can view because if you don't have it turned on, they're not going to be able to access it in Google slides. They won't be able to listen to it. And now I'm just going to automatically drop this in. I'm going to say, keep as a separate file. Okay. So now it is number 10. It shows me the date. And now when my slide 
I am going to click insert, audio. As soon as I click on audio, you can see it has my two most recent ones on there. So it's got six, it like we took over something else that I had before. I'm gonna take the 10 because that is the one that I had saved separately, okay? It can I name them? Can I name them? Of course you can rename them. Rename them however way you would like. Okay, so you don't get confused. I'm just lazy and I don't rename them. Um, and I click select. And now I have my wonderful little speech bubble right over here that I can make big or I can make small. And then when I click on it. Bonjour, je m'appelle Valérie. Enchantée. Je suis contente de vous rencontrer. So now I have this in here. I could have it on my slide with my students introducing themselves. If you are a lower grades teacher, you're like, I just want to hear your fluency in reading. You could use that too, right? Or you could be like, oh, my students wrote a paragraph. I want to hear you read your paragraph to me. Once again, checking on your own fluency, right? Or it could just be my students are going to talk me through what's going on on their slide deck. Online voice recorder, you just record your voice, drop it in a file. And then boom, you have it. It's like, right, it's right there. And you're like, well, Valerie, what if I don't like this image? I don't want it to be this little speaker, right? I've uploaded my sound. I'm going to right click. And where I right click, I'm going to replace the image. And then in replacing the image, you can upload from your computer. You can search the web. I'm going to upload from my computer. And here are all of the items that I have, right? So maybe I have an image here for myself already. I'm gonna click the image that I wanted to replace it with. And so now it's like, hey, read me, read me, right? And now, bonjour, je m'appelle Valérie, enchantée. Je suis contente de vous rencontrer. So now my, maybe it's my kiddo using the unscreen, they've created a video of themselves doing this, they've created into a GIF, right? And they're saying, bonjour, they're introducing themselves. Or maybe it's like, oh, c'est cool, help, help, right? So this works really, really well. Um, how is this different from recording in PowerPoint? PowerPoint records itself already. Google Slides don't. So this is the Google Slides extension to how you can actually add your voice. I am not a PowerPoint user in general. So Rim, go you for already using <laughs> the voice recorder and PowerPoint. Um, this is the go of the roundabout for the people who are Google schools and don't necessarily have access to PowerPoint. And it works for all of the other apps as well. So um this definitely helps but i do realize that it is break time for all of you because we have been sitting here for a really really long time so let's come back in 10 minutes um it is break time so let's come back in 10 minutes and oops wrong one and it is 10 47 so we'll be back at 10 57 does that sound good to everybody Welcome back, everybody, for those of you who are back. Yeah, there's someone who is having difficulties with, um, oh, okay, even with this on phone, if you are on your phone, you don't have to download your Nearpod, just join Nearpod. Open Nearpod in your Google, uh, and then just j say join. Do not download it on your phone. Sorry about that. Yeah, you don't have to download it. Um, I think Nearpod on your phone, it may ask you to download the app. Like I have the Nearpod app on my phone that I use when I am going to join a session from somebody else. Um, yeah, I think this is what she's asking on her phone. So it may but, be necessary. So I, uh, yeah. I don't know. On my iPhone, it didn't, uh, it doesn't ask me. It's just like I go to the website itself through Google and then I can sign in from there if it's giving you a hard time downloading the app. So, yeah, I, I, this is my suggestion again. So, I'm not sure if I'm going to Google Docs. 
It's asking you to I can't look into my I can't log into my Google Docs. Oh. Even though I have like you know the meeting password and the meeting username, but it's not allowing me. Though this is why I couldn't is, find is my Is this name. for Zoom? Is it for Zoom or is it for uh, the Nearpod? Are you talking about Zoom or Nearpod? You know what? I have to find my name for the like you know for the um, groups, mm -hmm. the yellow, pink, and and I have to oh, send oh, into the, oh, the Google yeah. Docs. It's not allowing me. I send you a screenshot, uh, Sitima. Well, you can just click on on the attendance sheet. Why don't you just click on um, try it again? I, I think probably she doesn't have an access from her phone. If she doesn't have that Google, yeah, I'm on my laptop. Oh yeah, okay. I'm All right. my laptop. Well, laptop. Use this form because I turned off needing to collect your information. So. So it, um, so I, will, I was able to sign in to fill in the certificate. Okay, good. But I'm talking about like, you know, the Google Doc that we have the three groups, the yellow, blue, and. Oh, you weren't able to get into that? No, yeah. Oh, well, here, here's the link for you. <laughs> Whichever link it is that you need, um, I'm just gonna put you into the blue group. Okay. okay. <laughs> And for the new ones, just type, post it again, the link to Nearpod and for the attendance sheet. So, okay, if you just joined us. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Stada Imanala, good morning. I just entered from my phone. I, I searched from the Google Nearpod mm -hmm. and uh, showed me that sign up for free, register a quote, request a quote. So from this step, what should I do? Just like you want to just join there could be a join code yeah, okay um and the code to join is this it's j seven c t j u so you'll thank always you. see at the top left corner okay great thank you um and somebody had asked how i got the timer to show full screen so my screen i'm sharing my screen with you so i literally put down timer for nine minutes and then google has its automatic timer right so I just put it onto full screen and there it was for you, okay? Um, it, it's, it wasn't anything fancy at all. I didn't go over to YouTube for a video. It was just Google's own timer that I used. All right, I hope all of you had a wonderful, you got to take care of your bodies. Now we are back. Um, and I a hop back before we get to our lesson. Um, I want to talk a little bit about our Freyer or friend. So for Freyer or friend, you're like, what is it exactly? Freyer or friend is using the Freyer model. So Freyer is this amazing educator who had said, you know, it would make a lot more sense for our students to know having like what an example is to use things more in context, right? So we know what, so they really fully understand. There's like a definition of something. There is a non-definition. They're using a new vocabulary word in a sentence, but we're gonna take Freyer's idea and modify it just a tiny bit because we're gonna put it into a different academic content, okay? And so on Nearpod, you are gonna, you are gonna see, we have a, we're gonna put you out into breakout rooms and you are going to talk to your friends. What exactly does it look like? Here is what it looks like. Whoops, not this one. Um, here's what it looks like. So you are going to basically look at your friend, look at the person who you're in the breakout room with and describe what your friend looks like, okay? Maybe physical attributes, if you know the person already, and then you're gonna talk to the person and ask them what they actually like. Do they like food? What, maybe what's their favorite food? What's their team? What's their band? You're gonna draw a picture of his or her dream house or ask them, what's your, what's your dream house like? What would it have? And then what are the four things that he or she does not like? For the sake of time, 
because time goes by so quickly today. We are just going to focus on your dream house. Okay. Only ask your partner about your dream house. And I am going to give you, I'm going to give you three minutes. So you have like one and a half minute for each item. Okay. Talk to your partner. So Iman, if you could help me set it up in breakout, help me set breakout rooms for everyone. There are 66 of us. So we need 33 rooms. The timer here is for eight minutes, but you know, don't worry. I'm not going to use the whole eight minutes. You've got three minutes to do this. Okay. I'm going to, once everybody is in their breakout rooms, remember you're only talking to people about your dream house. So ask your partner what their dream house is like, and then come back and then you're going to take turns. You're writing down your partner's dream house on your document. Okay. You're writing for your partner. Ready when you are, I can open the rooms. Let's go out into breakout rooms, go for it. Part of the norms is be patient, be positive, right? Sometimes it is just people get kicked out of their rooms or they are here, but they stepped away for a few more minutes. So they weren't able to join you. And within three minutes, it's actually kind of hard to get these things done. You know, uh, yeah. a lot of the times with my students, <laughs> they have about a good 15 minutes to do what it is that I am asking them to do yeah. so that there is time to, you know, get in the room to connect. Um, and at, usually like by the end of the school year, they're pretty good. Like mid school year, they know exactly what it is that they have to do. So, you know, it's just, it's just how it is, right? It's technology. We embrace it and now we stay positive. But yeah. if you see on my shared screen, I am actually able to see your work in progress. So once again, me as a teacher, if your video is not on, I tell my kiddos, I was like, I don't mind if your videos aren't on because I am able to check for your participation and your activity directly either in your pod or in a Google slide deck, right? So even if their video is not on, I'm like, I can see what's going on. And within those 15 minutes that I have with them, I'm like, ooh, you know what? I see that Raya's got her work in progress, but nothing's been written down yet. So I'm opening my, I have my breakout room window open and I join their room and I'm like, hey Raya, how's it going? How's it going with your partner? You know? And then, so we have a quick conversation and then they're like, oh, we're just still talking. We haven't written anything down yet. And then, so I just hop back out. It's like a 15 second exchange maybe, or sometimes I'm just hopping in and I'm just like a fly on the wall because they're busy doing whatever it is that they're doing. I see that they're doing, but then boom, we come back out. Uh, you were talking, but you didn't know where to draw. It's okay. So here, this is how we're able to draw. So here I am on my student screen, right? Um, you click on any of these buttons below. So this is my drawing. And here is my color that I chose. I can talk about thickness of my pen. And then you just draw. You just start drawing your dream house, however way you would like to. So, uh, and it's very good for for writing for our for Arabic. I use it a lot for uh, for writing. Uh, you know, yes. So does that mean we need to uh, go to your slide that you uh, shared with us and then draw, or uh, where to draw? Because we just saw like our pictures in the breakout. Um, it should be in your Nearpod. So if you were, if you had your Nearpod open, you would be on this slide. So you- would Okay, so we stay on the Nearpod, like uh, mm -hmm. not from, okay. That's what, what we were confused on. Oops, I'm sorry, I, w I didn't clarify on that. Um, Actually, this is maybe uh, okay. my question. Uh, do we need to, at the beginning of the school, let's say, do we need to teach the kids all these yes. tools and the apps we are using, like for the first one or two weeks before like giving any classes? So I, when they go to these things, they can, like for me, I'm like new this one. So I was kind of confused, like four minutes just to figure out where is the tools. Yes. So I generally, before I start any form of technology tools with my students, it's always little by little. So the very first, like the first day we use Nearpod, it's just 
your last name, first name for signing in, right? And then we draw something fun, you know, obviously grade level appropriate, right? So I teach them how to use and all of these tools little by little. And I've been using Nearpod since, I don't know, like 2014. So my kindergarten students got to use it and it's really just always little by little. I don't, I definitely don't show them all of these tools that I am showing you in these three hours in one day. It usually takes me a good, like the first trimester to get through every single one of these items. Um, and it takes time because they were also kindergartners. So like we're learning how to write at the same time, but we're also learning how to speak French, right? So I'm also teaching them mouse skills. Like just as I teach them graphic skills of here's how you draw horizontal lines with your hand, like with a pencil. I'm also teaching them like you pick up a mouse and then you click and you drag, let go. You click, you drag and you let go. So I always teach them these tools and then for my kiddos who don't necessarily have a mouse, I teach them to use their two fingers. You click down one and then you draw with the other, right? You click, you use one finger to click and then you draw with the other. So it really just depends on what method it is, what device they're using. But I always, always, always teach them how to use the tool. And I rarely teach them to use a tool while I'm giving them academic content. It's always something fun because once again, cognitive load, you can't introduce new content and new tech at the same time. The um, question, is it a free? They have two versions. So, and actually it's interesting that they upgrade me to the gold right now. I, I didn't pay anything, but that they upgraded me to the gold with the Nearpod. So do you wanna talk about this Valerie, please? Yeah, so there are free versions of Nearpod, um, which is the silver version. You can have access to basically all of these tools within the free version. You just can't have student paced lessons. And you're also limited by your, by memory, like how much storage you have within the Nearpod website. I create all of mine in Google Slides. And so if they do need to, if I do need to create more space within Nearpod, I can delete what it is that's already there because I have them all in my slides. You don't have access, like the free version doesn't give you access to Nearpod's entire library worth of stuff too. They have over 8,000 prepared lessons that are really good lessons. Um, so as a free user, you don't have access to that. I am a district user, so I have access to everything. But even then, I think I am just a really nitpicky person that I create everything on my own because I want things to go my way, you know? But a lot of the math teachers and um, language arts teachers and science teachers, they just use what they have. Um, Besides, uh, I explored, there isn't uh, Arabic, but there is French, Spanish, uh, you know, lesson and Chinese lessons. But yeah. anyways, yeah, uh, that they will give you for three months. It's um, it's mm -hmm. free gold, whatever, or that they upgrade you because they want it. Yes. To get you hooked on it. And okay. I'm hooked in it because another thing is like... Uh, I don't, we are not gonna use, I don't know, it's uh, with the video. And mm -hmm. the video, it's like a puzzle. You can add activities inside it too. So Activity. here is a three and one. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's gonna be a good idea if we are as Arabic teachers, use this nearpod and start putting like, you know, adding uh, our activities as uh, Valerie does. Mm -hmm. uh, and this how we can implement the Arabic uh, language in this uh, app also. So whoever come after us will be able to access all these uh, activities. Um, you can share your lessons with the other teachers, yes. Um, it's still a little tricky in how you share lessons with Nearpod because sometimes the activities don't share through. Yeah. Um, and there is only one teacher who can lead a Nearpod. So if you have a co-teacher, they have to log in as a student 
um, and the shared lesson, like you have to launch two separate lessons and it gets a little complicated. So um, I do. No, I, I mean, like, you know, we can like, you know, uh, directly to the app to add these activities and their uh, library after we like start using you, it and you, creating. You can share things. them in your Google slide and actually it's easier. And then you can open it through uh, Nearpod. I think this is its easier way of sharing. And again, Valerie knows better than me. I, I do everything within Google Slides. <clears throat> so you can see like my, my Nearpod is in here, right? Here is my other Nearpod that is in here as well. So my activities are done all within Google Slides. I don't actually do anything on the Nearpod website aside from launching my lesson. So it's, I just do it this way because I think it's easier where everything is intact and I have control on this end. Whereas if I want to delete it from Nearpod, I can. But I mean, I can spend eight hours training uh, training y'all on Nearpod too. So, but we're talking about student engagement. This is important. Um, but I want to so maybe we can have you again, uh, mm -hmm. Valerie, for a shorter time for an hour session, uh, mm -hmm. or during our conference uh, day, we can have you probably for an hour and it would be delegated for uh, Nearpod. Yeah, okay? for right. just using Nearpod, and then that'll be helpful for those of you who are interested in using it more, right? Um, but let's hop on back. So we've got some sweet houses over here, we've got a house with you know, some plants, right? And once again, if you are paying attention on your Nearpod tab, you know, you can see that I have shared it with you, right? And so we can see that Hadia has drawn um, her partner's dream house, you know? And then this is an opportunity for them to talk, right? So you can really just, we're working on our interpersonal, um, interpersonal communication skills right here, having them ask these questions. And of course, these are questions that I would have trained my students on being able to answer already first. We had talked about parts of the house already, you know, with our vocabulary deck that we had built, what would my house have? And in French, it would be like, ma maison a blah, blah, blah. Ma maison a une cuisine blanche. Elle a un, une, une salle de bain noire, you know, whatever it is. So they've been practicing this so that during this interpersonal communication, they are able to share it, okay? We're always gonna build up to this, okay? So with that, you can, I just wanna show you, you can do it directly in Nearpod if you want to, or if you are a Google Slides user because you don't use Nearpod, you can do it completely in Google Slides as well. And then we have group one and group two over here um just so that you can see what it looks like okay so once again i have a select a slide below right you are always more than welcome to take these resources that i have you have editing rights but i always encourage you to just click file make a copy so that you can have what it is that you need okay instead of editing my slides that i have just file make a copy so then it becomes yours modify to however way you would like for it to be modified okay um bup, 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 bup. so there we go um in terms of how we use this my students generally really enjoy being able to talk to a partner because they're given usually 15 20 minutes to talk things through while i am hopping through each breakout room to make sure that they are on task i do mine either on google slides and once again i have them focus on like the student who is on roster number three, I can see who it is, right? I can see if they're writing or if they're doing something because I have it on my grid view, okay? Once again, I am monitoring them here or if I am doing it in Nearpod, I can see it right away because it is live. So I am hopping in from room to room and I can also listen to their conversations. They're developing language because I'm giving them the sentence frames that they need to talk to each other, or sometimes they speak brokenly to each other, or sometimes if I'm not there, they do just hop directly to English, right? But are they in content? They are in content, okay? They're using the academic content. I always have a section there for drawing, 
because we want to pay attention to the universal design for learning where they get to show their ideas in different ways. Some of our students could be super duper creative or sometimes it's the only part that they are able to do, right? For a lot of my kindergartners, I mean, I obviously would not have such so much text for the kindergartners. It's simplified where everything is drawing for kinders unless it is something that we have already learned about such as a sentence frame, like all of my kinders know how to write C, il est, elle est, you know, they know how to write the really simple things that we have taught them consistently. But once again, that takes time to build up. So at the beginning of the year, it really is just all drawings. If you're working with high school students, maybe you have your sentence frame set for them in how they should be answering. Or maybe you have your vocabulary deck, right? That's already pulled up that they have created and they get to choose the words that they need. Being able to use the same four questions every single time, they know that when they are here, they're always gonna be describing something. So maybe it's not describe a classmate. Maybe it's describe this house, okay? What are the four things that he or she likes? Maybe it's like, what are the four things that this house may like? We're going to personify the house, right? This house is going to have some really green grass. You have drawing a picture of it. What are the four things that the house is not like? So put it in whichever context it is that you need, but they always know one is going to be describing something that likes, something does not like, and then a picture of it, okay? Um, when you feel that your students are ready, or this could even be a character in a book. I often do this with characters in a book as well. So I read an entire series that's all about this fox with my students. And so they're able to describe the fox. They're able to describe what the fox likes or doesn't like. And sometimes there's a lot of critical thinking involved, right? Because I'm listing four things. What are the four things that the fox does not like or what the wolf does not like? And so it gets them really thinking about these items. The very first question that I choose to replace so that I could bring up the DOK level, the depth of knowledge level for my students is describe your classmate. Um, or sorry, or the things that she likes or doesn't like, because those things you don't, you know, you wanna support with evidence, right? So you always replace just one question at a time. They get used to these four questions. So they're like, oh, I see Freyer. I know these are the four things that I have to look for in my reading, in my writing. So cognitive load is low. I switch out one question at a time. And so they only have to worry about that one new question, okay? How long are the lessons for the younger learners online? Um, to be honest, I have not done this online with a group of kindergartners or first graders. I've done them in person with them when I was an in-class teacher. And in class, it's usually about 30 minutes because they are talking and then they are completing this together. Um, and with the drawing, some kiddos spend more time drawing. Um, I have it done in as little as 20 minutes, but then that was like they only answered two parts instead. And then so it was like another 20 minutes for the next day for them to answer that part. You know, um, you can also modify it to only have one question each time, right? So depending on your student's grade level, you don't always have to give them four boxes. Okay. Or that they can fill every, like we're saying, every day, one box. So mm -hmm. it would be part of it is accumulating through the week. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it, you don't have to use this whole thing all in one time. You can always break it up. Um, and so it really just, you know your students best. So do what is the best for your students. I, I like the, the, the most important point that you were saying, because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the EDIO protocol, it is setting the mind of the students of a certain way of uh, expecting what's uh, the strategies or how that they need to think about or learn. So it's only one piece that it helps them just to maintain that part, that aspect of stability or uh, routine, 
but the other one it gives it brings some change into the picture then they don't get bored exactly so the content is always changing but the frame is always the same right so it's these four questions but maybe it's about a house maybe it's about a particular animal maybe it's on mom right maybe it's on dad so the content changes but the questions don't or it could be a famous person you know um and with the high with the upper grades they're like oh she likes grape juice great why does she like grape juice give me evidence she likes grape juice because that's what she drinks for lunch every day you know um so there's this evidence component within the frayer model that we also ask of the students if it's from a book we're like okay tell me what page number or give me a quote right so here's where you can also bring in your authentic texts if you are maybe an ap arabic teacher and you're reading these texts and you're doing text analyses and with these analyses, they'd be like, okay, you know what? We need to add this in here. We have the why. We have our evidence and we can cite it. Okay. So this is why Freyer is important. And the right time to switch questions is when your students know the questions really, really well. And once again, you switch out one at a time. You give them like two or three weeks, depending on how often you use this in your classroom. I freyered about once or twice in my classroom a week. So it was like about six weeks when I switched on one of the questions but I also have lower grades that I was working with. So it wasn't, um, you know, it, 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 they, they took a little bit more time. Whereas your upper graded kids, maybe it'll only take four or five weeks for you to switch out a question. Any questions about Freyer for now? Um, any mind? Have a yeah. question? Yeah, Dina, go for so, it. So yes, when I was doing the activity with you, so I drew the house and everything I did not submit. Before submitting, it told me time is up. So does it mean the work is lost? And you know, this could be frustrating for the kids as well. So, so how is it timed? Who control it? Can we go back to it? How does it work? So in the time, when I, I set a timer on here and it is automatically submitted. So your work is not lost at all. Okay. And if I were to come back to it, I can click on start activity. Um, and then you will see that once again, um, you can continue to draw what it is that you are drawing. Your work is not lost at all. Wonderful. Right? So if uh, the timer, you set the timer, because I put that. So if you set the timer and you wanted to add more time, you can do that later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I can always just start. If I press start activity right now, again, you will go back to your original one and then you you know, like for me right over here, it says, let's go, right? So you see my drawing was still that I had started. It's still there and I can add more to it, okay? It's not lost at all. And after I click submit, I can always unsubmit. You see, it says, got it. I can click edit answer. And then now I am back to editing my answer once again. I always put a timer on here just because it force submits every single person's work when the timer is done. Um, whereas if I don't set the timer, if the students don't submit, I kind of have to, you know, fix them down a little bit to see what their final work is. So There's another question. Can they use it with the Google Classroom? And I would really hope that if you have any question, please write it down, then we can answer it. Um, in Google Classroom, using Nearpod in Google Classroom or using this idea in Google Classroom? Using this idea in Google Classroom, you definitely can. Um, I just put it all in a slide deck like this, right? So then my students can go in and they can have editing rights, you know? Um, they, they're able to do that. If your kiddos aren't able to handle it, I just do two of them like this. And then I make a copy for each student. So then each student has one and then they're working on it directly. One way or another, um, you know, it is your choice as a teacher. I do it like this in a Google slide. So then they have the opportunity to see what other people have drawn and they can go on this nice gallery walk to see what other people's answers are. That's not always the case. Um, you can do a gallery walk 
in Google Classroom as well, but then you, the teacher, you you have to like advance the next one, right? Whereas with this one, if it's all in a slide deck, they could just go down one by another, by another, by another to see what everyone has written, okay? Um, so it is your choice. Time keeps going. Question, Valerie. I'm sorry, but there is one question asking, how long do you think should be a online lesson for let's say younger pre-k to first grade we answered this question lena <laughs> sorry when <laughs> i was asleep <laughs> <laughs> no maybe you were off uh, you know you <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> i usually give my kiddos 20 to 30 minutes to work on this um <laughs> and it really just depends on how much in depth I want them to work on it together, how much time I give them to talk, how much time I give them to write. Um, the middle schoolers that I had, you know, it, 20 minutes was plenty. Um, sometimes I only gave them 15 because middle schoolers tend to dilly dally more and they're able to talk about many more things. Um, whereas I found my kindergartners, even though I give them just one block, like they're, they were better about just getting to work. Um, and they also just took more time you know, to do what it is that I'm asking them to do. And the middle schoolers needed, you know, the fire, because I realized when I gave them 20 minutes, like the first, I want to say the first 10 minutes were usually talking about other things. Um, they weren't necessarily on topic. So then no, them knowing that they only had 10 minutes to do this, they're like, all right, like, let's answer these questions, you know, and they answer quickly and they get right to the point. So know your students, whereas, you know, you know them best. So you get to be the judge. I usually like, and I always tell them, I was like, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just looking for answers and evidence. And you're going to share it. There's always a sharing component. Always, always a sharing component. So that if they didn't get to draw the perfect thing, or if they're like, but I'm not a very good artist. Oh, I didn't get to finish explaining or finish typing, right? explain it to me and, you know, explain it to me verbally, right? Because you are going to be presenting on it. Okay. Um, all right, let's move on to our French lesson. So here we are, we're gonna, we, we taken our break. Here's our French lesson. Um, alors, nous allons commencer. Une, nous avons une photo ici. Que voyez-vous? Qu'est-ce que vous allez voir? Et qu'est-ce qui va se passer? Hmm. Là, il y a une maison. Et là, il y a quelque chose ici. Hmm. Il faut bien réfléchir. OK? Alors, nous allons regarder la vidéo sans le son. Là, on n'entend rien. OK? On regarde. Nous regardons seulement. Et vous allez me dire ce que vous voyez après. I'm just going to make sure that I am sharing sound with you. Alors, on commence. Regardez bien. Alors, dans le chat, vous allez mettre qu'est-ce que vous avez vu? Qu'est-ce que vous avez vu? 
vous pouvez écrire en anglais « Ah, une maison dans un arbre. » Oui, il y a une maison dans un arbre. Une, une maison sur un arbre, exactement. Un arbre magique, oui. Une personne, oui. Quoi d'autre Il y a une famille, oui, il y a une famille. Un homme, une famille, dans la maison. Ah, c'est la maison magique, oui. Ah, d'accord. Il y a une image qui est magique. Oui, c'est une jolie maison. Alors, nous allons regarder à ah, une maison de rêve, une maison magique, un grand arbre, une famille. Super, super. Alors, nous allons regarder encore une fois, cette fois-ci, nous allons entendre. Okay? Je mettrai le son cette fois-ci. Alors, on recommence. Faites attention. Qu'est-ce qui se passe? Okay? Faites bien, bien, bien attention. Un abri. simplement sa maison. Avec quelques mots, se construit. Le roi Merlin et vos projets vont plus loin. Alors, là, cette fois-ci, mettez dans le chat qu'est-ce que vous avez vu, qu'est-ce que vous avez entendu, qu'est-ce que vous avez vu, qu'est-ce que vous avez entendu. Allez-y. Il y a la maison, oui. Construire une maison, un abri, exactement. Il y a qui dans là, il, dans, dans la publicité, il a dit un abri. J'ai vu une maison, une pub magnifique. Il y a un dessin, oui. C'est la publicité, oui. Un château. Ah, c'est le travail d'équipe qui qui serait bien pour su, pour euh, pour survivre les, les temps difficiles. Ah, j'ai entendu le mot « chez soi », exactement, « chez soi ». Quand on est à la maison, oui, il y a l'amour, exactement. Alors, rendre tout possible. Ah, on peut avoir une maison de rêve qui devient une réalité, un projet, exactement. Super, super. Alors on va venir ici. Quelles sont vos, vos observations Alors, donc normalement, hum, Amira, est-ce que tu, est-ce que vous pouvez vous me remettre, euh, utiliser votre voix et est-ce que vous pouvez dire je vois un toit Oui, bien sûr. Alors, je vois un toit, je vois une maison de rêve, je vois une famille. Oui, super, mais là, vous trichez parce que vous parlez français. <rire> Alors, on a Touraya. Touraya, est-ce que vous pouvez me dire ce que vous voyez, ce que vous avez vu, ce que vous observez? J'ai vu une maison et c'est un commercial, donc ils ont dit que c'est plus qu'une maison, c'est un abri, c'est un chez soi, c'est quelque chose qui nous font... Euh, sentir de, de, de très bons sentiments oui mais vous trichez tous vous êtes tous francophones <rire> les tricheurs <rire> alors donc là dans la publicité que nous avons vue dans la vidéo c'est une pub ou une publicité ok c'est la publicité pour un magasin comme le bricot, euh, euh, comme, enfin, comme Home Depot, on peut dire. Okay? Et là, c'est marqué, ils ont dit dans la vidéo, un abri. Voici un abri. Un abri, c'est quelque part où on est caché, où on est sauvé par les, les esprits, de, enfin, les choses dans, dans la nature, comme la pluie. Okay? Là, c'est un abri. 
un toit. On a un toit, donc là, on a le toit au-dessus de nous. Et puis là, on a un chez-soi. Comme à la maison, nous sommes chez nous. On est chez soi. Et là, à la fin, c'est marqué, on ne construit pas simplement sa maison. Donc, ce n'est pas juste une construction de la maison, mais c'est avec elle, avec la maison, que nous, nous nous construisons qu'on se construit, d'accord Donc ce n'est pas la maison qui nous fait, enfin ce n'est pas nous qui fait la maison, mais c'est la maison qui nous construisons aussi, ok Alors, les enfants, vous n'êtes pas mes enfants, les apprenants, dites avec moi un abri, dites avec moi je vois un abri, allez-y, je vois un abri, magnifique Maintenant, on voit un abri. Oui, super. Tout le monde, il y a un toit. 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 Je suis chez moi. 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 Je, je suis de moi. Chez moi. Et chez, chez, chez suis. Moi. moi. Je suis chez moi. Yeah. Je, je suis, suis chez moi. Chez moi. Je, je suis chez moi. moi. Oui, je suis chez moi. Sorry, I can see just we, but I can see the moi. So what does that mean? Je suis je chez suis. moi. Donc là, dans notre maison ici, je suis je chez suis. moi. Là, in ma... the house, we are my in the house. house. Mm -hmm. My big house. C'est ma maison. Oui, c'est à mm -hmm. moi. Je suis Anna. I mean, I mean. Je suis so, me. I am in the house. Dans ma maison. C'est 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 ma maison. OK. Alors. So. You just got this whole idea of how I do a lot of actions and whatnot, right? Because we do need to have that one. Okay. And you can see how all of this is connected. We keep talking about a house. How do we bring our culture into this? How do we bring our target language culture into this? Here is the next part. Normally, I would also do this directly in French. Okay. But that was like beginning. I, I'm like igniting their interest. They're like, oh, there's this really cool thing happening. It's authentic resource that I am using. It's an authentic material that I'm using. It's a publicity from France using one of their stores, right? And, and what makes it interesting is because you're seeing something, you know, real. It's different than when you see only a small house and a regular house. This is, it makes you think. It triggers your curiosity. That's what I like about this. Yeah. So there's, there's a ton of things to take from this, right? Yeah. And you can't talk about language learning without bringing up Donna Clementi, right? And she always says, if you lead with culture, language will follow. The language will follow if you lead with culture. If we keep focusing in our world language instruction on just vocabulary development and vocab, vocab, vocab without bringing in the culture, our students will lose interest. Our students are going to lose interest if we don't follow, if we don't follow with culture because it's the culture that makes the language really interesting, right? So here are all sorts of different houses. Il y a des maisons, okay? Um, on the next screen, I just, I, I learned a new Arabic word yesterday, and this is, oh, you want dar, right? Did I, did I say what the right low D? Dar. <laughs> dar. Dar. Mm -hmm. okay. On the next screen, you are going to draw what this word means to you. Okay, are you ready? You don't have to write anything You're just going to draw what this word means for you. Think about multiple ways you think about this word, okay? 
because it might have a different meaning it might have you know for different groups or from different cultures from different parts of the arab world so think about dar mm -hmm. the all... word dar what comes to your mind first go for it draw your representation you've got three minutes And Lena Kolaki, you have been responding to me in direct messages as opposed to responding to everyone. So Amalia had asked how long the workshop is and we, we're going until 1230 today. If you wanna add in details to what you are drawing, you have three minutes. So use your time and be prepared to talk about it. Lana, you are going to be drawing in Nearpod. So hop on over to your Nearpod tab and it should show up something that looks like this. Um, Amal, you should be in Nearpod as opposed to being in um, Google Docs. So I am gonna put you, ah. Yes, Danye, the code is 7CTJU, but here is a direct link for you, okay? Amal, you shouldn't have to log in into Nearpod. It should just be a join code. So if you go to nearpod.com, it usually has students right over here where it says join a lesson and you just put in the code. Um, oh, Hafita, no worry about it. Technology happens. If you want to draw on a sheet of paper that is beside you, you can draw on a sheet of paper. I don't mind. So if you want to just draw on the side because you can't access the techie stuff, no worries. Always, there's always like an analog way to do this, right? So you can always just draw on a separate sheet of paper. You got about 44 seconds. The code, yeah, the code is seven ZTJU. Amal, you don't have to be sorry. It's all good. We are all good. I see some of y'all have some really beautiful drawings. Got about six more seconds. Be ready to talk about it because I am going to randomly put on you. Okay, so Yusuf Jabbar, I am sharing yours. So all of you who are on Nearpod, you should be able to see that I am sharing it with you. Yusuf, can you please unmute and talk, talk to us about what it is that you've drawn? Um. Yes, yeah, so I drew more of a, I guess, a home um, instead of a, a house uh, because the daughter in Arabic, it kind of, you know, indicates, you know, um, you know, a, a yard and, you know, all of the, the components that make like a, a home or like an abode. Um, so it extends, it, it extends beyond the house itself and it becomes more of a home. Okay. And who would be in this home? Who would be in this home? Um, of course, m m wife and kids and, and hopefully um, parents um, as well. <laughs> oh, so you have wife and kids and parents. That's yeah. interesting. Okay, thank you very much. And what about um, for maintaining the house because you have such a beautiful yard right there, right? That you have drawn, who, who maintains or who helps you with like the maintenance, the maintenance of all these? And of course, I guess we're just talking, I mean, this would be more of a dream house, but um, 
uh, you know, uh, have kids and maybe even till we have like Gar and, you know, you know, so that it's not just like a, a, a I guess a, a, a chore, but it becomes more like a, you know, a project, you know, it, you know, they taking care of a garden instead of just cleaning the yard, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so it would be more of a, a family project. Maybe we have like, you know, plants and maybe we have like vegetation <laughs> and all of these type of things. Nice. So your perspective is that is more like a project that you're working on together. So it's more like a teamwork item. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Thank you very much, Yusuf. Uh, you're welcome. And I am going to randomly pick Samia. Samia, can you please share with us what it is that you've drawn? Hello. Yeah, um, I drew a house with, um, I felt like uh, the house should, you know, my house is full of love. That's why I put heart. Mm -hmm. It's a place of love and uh, peace. So uh, this is what I drew. Okay. And what would your house, what would, who would be in your house? Uh, my family, my, oh, which uh, consists of my husband, my uh, children. Mm -hmm. And maybe my parents. Maybe your parents. Yeah, when they come and visit. Nice. Thank you very much. And a last person, someone who had drawn on paper instead. Yay, can you please go? I, 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 I see you, but I, I don't know your name right now because I can't. Uh... Um, Hafiza, Tafadali Ustada Hafiza. I think so. Hafiza, yes. Hafiza, Tafadali. Yes. Yeah, shukran. My house is in the outside. It has a lot of trees and nature. And the people be in my house, all the kids, regardless, relative or friends, they all welcome in my house. Mm -hmm. And uh, nature is very important part of it. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of learning around it, even environmental learning. Ooh, so learning is an important aspect for you. Yes. Uh, nice. Thank you very much. And who lives in the house with you? Uh, who lives in my house? My house is a, a nice house, and we were very welcoming people. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, my kids living in my house, and I'm expecting if I have grandchildren they'll be part of my house and I have a lot of brothers and sister they have a lot of grandchildren and I'm the grandma for all of them oh that is fantastic yes. and they're gonna be all in here <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. after corona inshallah you know, honestly, uh, I've been I've been doing teaching them Arabic and Quran in my house with a lot of restriction, but they look they all look forward to come and visit and do the learning. Now they love to learn just to come and get together. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> That's part of it, you know, to socialize. I made it made it so much fun, and they all love to come. That is fantastic. Be safe, be safe, please. <laughs> yes, we are. We are, you definitely. Because we're only one family and we're- Oh, really okay, it's family. It's not like others, it's just one family. Good. I have a huge house too. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> that is fantastic. So we see a lot of you represented houses, right? Um, houses of some sort. Halima wrote peace of mind as opposed to drawing a house. That's really cool, right? We got safety and warmth. Um, you know, we have, ooh, N.Ayub 1993 wrote, um, like actually drew different compartments of the house, right? That's a really cool representation. Uh, I, I would like to hear from uh, maybe Amira, Adil from Morocco, uh, from Tunis, Al-Jazair. Mada ta'ani lakum kalimid dar? Because here we can go into deeper into the different cultures and how we use the word in different, in the Arab world, in different cultures. Dal for us. Assalamu uh, alaikum, everybody. Wa alaikum <laughs> Okay. Dal um, is something big. It's, big, uh, it's bigger than um, 
than a regular house. It's something big. Um, it has um, uh, like a hall, big hall uh, in the middle and it's um, all around the rooms. It can, you know, um, have uh, multi-families in it and they share the, you know, different activities, daily activities. There is love, cousins, they can live together in the same, that's dark, that's big. Uh, usually it's only one floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is a little garden in, in the middle. Uh, sometimes when it's in the um, countryside, there is a well of water. Uh, and since I'm from the southern part of Tunisia, we are more in the oasis. Uh, then you may <laughs> see some uh, palm trees uh, and uh, the dog barking there. You may see the donkey there. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that's how it is. Dar usually is big and is more in the uh, countryside. It's interesting because Iman al Tayyab is saying in Kuwait, Dar and Darak, it's the bedroom. Mm. Mm. So in Algeria, so it refers to home. Dar or maybe privacy. Mm -hmm. Dar is in, in Libyan culture is room. Hosh is manzil, house. Mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Okay. okay. So yeah, so I'm just uh, leading with how many different ways, it's still one word that you can take it to different cultures and teach culture, because Valerie is asking us about this. Yeah, so that's true. But I also thought about dar as the verb to move around, go around. Uh, yes, it is uh, dar has different meaning for different uh, house shapes or uh, rooms maybe, but for me, I thought, okay, maybe um, I'm thinking dar, if it's only a word with no image, I will think about it as a verb. Yes, you have your hand raised, Tina. You know, also it came to my mind that uh, the word dar, if you add other words, other words at the end of dar, like for example, we say dar al-ajaza is the house for elderly, dar al-aytam is the orphanage, it changed the meaning. Diyar al-Arab, where, you know, this is the, the countries for Arab people. Dar al-Fana is hereafter. Dar al-Akhira, hereafter. Dar yeah. as a verb is going around, hawla. Um, dari bishay is to know about something. So subhanAllah, you look at the, the word dar and you can find so many meanings, you know, and it came to my mind and I wanted to share that with you. Beautiful. Yeah. So in a situation like this, do we direct the kids for what we need, like from like, you know, dar, bait, house, like, you know, do, or just leave it like this. And maybe some people, some kids are Arabic, like, you know, and they go further than just dar. This it's, is a good point, actually. Yes. So this is where you, either as a dual immersion teacher or as a heritage language teacher, can really draw out your knowledge of your of your target language speakers right of your arabic speakers or your french teachers because or your french students you know whichever language it is that you teach right because we do want to pull on what they know and help them see that even within our own language there are so many different cultural differences and i wanted to and one of my specific questions that i asked was who lives there because we also, even when we think about our AP standards and when we are building this cultural competency, we need to dig a little deeper into being able to compare and contrast what we know. In America, it is so easy to just, like most people have single family homes, right? It's just mom and dad and the kids at home, grandparents aren't really there. Um, but I love the fact that all of you who I had asked this, you're like, my brothers and my families are here. You know, my grandparents are here, hopefully, like, eventually, right? Like, that's the dream to have our parents living with us here as well. Whereas I think if you ask any American family, they'd be like, you want my brother-in-law to live here? You want my brother-in-law? No, like, that's not going to happen because it is just not part of their culture. So here, 
we're using that we can literally see at the top of this cultural iceberg to dig deeper down into our family values, right? Into our thought processes, into our attitudes towards age. Like our job is like, like even within the Chinese culture, it's like, you know, our grandmas are here, our grandmas stay at the house with us, right? And we take care of them. We're definitely not gonna send them to a home or to a retirement home or anything like that. They get older, they come and stay with us. It is our duty and our right to take care of them, you know? But that's not always the case. So it varies from cultures to culture. And we also have views on raising children. That's something deep down here, right? Um, like deep down in the bottom of the iceberg. Within our family, how are we raising our children within our house? Yeah. I love that, Yusuf, you had said, you know, it's not chores. It's a project that we do together as a family. I love, love, love that idea because it takes all of us working together to make our family a home, right? Or to make this house a home. And we are raising our children with these ideas of their responsibilities in the family. Whereas that's not always the case in once again, our American families, right? Um, and so there is this cultural comparison that we can talk about just simply based on a drawing. Dans ma, dans ma maison, il y a ma famille, right? In my house, there is my family. Il y a ma grand-mère, il y a mon grand-père, il y a ma tante, you know, so then we can still use the language frames that we have been building up all the way from the, even the beginning of this lesson, right? So we're talking about all of, like what we see, our sentence frames. And then here, when they're, when they're doing that drawing, they can talk about what is available in that drawing for them while going deeper into the cultural sense and diving deeper in our cultural um, iceberg. And so from there, we also have this cultural triangle that we talk about with from 19, actful 1999, right? In order to dive deep into that cultural, uh, into that cultural iceberg, we have to, have to, have to talk about the perspectives. But in order to talk about perspectives and practices, we have to start with the product because the product a lot of the times is the concrete item that we see. So how do we go from that book, from those tools, from the food that we eat, why we eat it, to how we eat it, to the practices that we have, when do we eat it, right? Like for my French friends, they always ask, like the family that I live with, when it's four o'clock, it's snack time. They're like, ah, il est 16 heures, c'est l'heure de goûter. It's just, that is the time when we have a snack. Whereas my parents at home, they're like, it's four o'clock. Well, dinner's at five. So you're not eating right now. That's <laughs> not going to happen. You know? So cultural differences, right? So it's a product, it's food, it's a snack food. My mom's like, you can have a snack at like 1.30 or at two, but you're definitely not having a snack at four because dinner's at five, period. So where do these cultural practices fit in? You can always, always, always start with something concrete that they can see. And then from there, using your sentence frames, you can dive deeper into the perspectives and the practices so that we can talk about culture, so that you're also addressing what you're doing. Questions so far of how you can bring in all of the culture to your lesson by just using one word. It was one word, stop, right? Mm -hmm. But then we also built up to it by watching a video. We've kind of talked about it. We had our like beginning of the vocabulary where we built all these things all around houses, right? So our students are really building this rich vocabulary with the sentence frames that we have provided for them. And in terms so of preparation, they were all templates. <laughs> They were all templates that I copy pasted. So you can also create this super duper rich item by recycling the templates that you have, right? 
And again, teaching, like uh, I've heard you over and over, like you use the sentence frame or some sentence again, and you started to impart it from the language that we pulled out. Of course, we are going fast right now from the vocabulary that you taught, you taught like, uh, I, I don't know Spanish, uh, French at all, but I can realize or recognize three words very easily from the video and it can be built on that. It is like to build on the house and entering the house and getting into the house. So it is the house with the family, the house I'm in. So all of this and thank you. Yes. So this is the idea. Yeah. All right. So now from all of that, you're like, so we've worked on this interpretive communication, right? Where they're interpreting the meaning of all the houses. They've built these vocabulary. They've had that interpersonal communication where they were talking to each other during Freya or Friend to use the vocabulary words that they know. And then now we're gonna work on that presentational communication by writing and talking about something. So here we have eight parts. And eight parts, you're like, what exactly is eight parts? Eight parts is another edu protocol, part of John Caripo and Marlena Heburn's creation, right? Eight parts basically is eight lessons, grammar lessons combined into one based on academic content, understanding and using the academic language. And so there's laughter, depending on which pictures you choose, how you choose the picture. I would love for you to click on that template right over there. Um, and it's gonna look like this and it's gonna ask you to make a copy, okay? So just click on make a copy. You do have to be signed in though. So know that you do have to be signed in. Um, and Valerie, can you explain um, why it's important just to uh, to have it like a copy and how we can do it as a copy at the end, probably? It's yes. a good idea later on. Yeah. Yes. So I am having you make a copy of this so that you can each have your individual copies. In Google Classroom, I don't have to force copy, right? In Google Classroom, it's just you assign it and then you say make a copy for every student. So every single student has their own individual sheet, okay? And you need to have your individual sheets as opposed to everybody working all together because there's a lot of, there's a lot of parts to this, you know? Um, and I want the students to put in as many words as they can on their own first before I start. Those of you who have already made a copy, here is an image that I had found online um, of something that is happening in a house, okay? So this is also the picture that we have, right? I put it in the copy that I've made for you as well. And I am just going to give you a few moments, okay? You are going to write in what verbs there are. If you wanna write this in Arabic, you're more than welcome to write this in Arabic. Um, I won't be able to write it in Arabic, but you, know, you could give it a try, right? What are some of the adverbs? You don't have to do this in particular. You know, if you want to start on nouns first, start on nouns. If you want to start on adjectives, start on adjectives. Start on conjunctions and pronouns, starting with a simile. You can fill in whichever thing you want to fill, okay? I am going to give you five minutes to do this. But what I would like for you to do is during these five minutes, pay attention to the chat because I am going to be messaging you for you to share one of the words or one of the words in a category, okay? So give me a thumbs up if you have access to the document and you're like, I am ready to work on this. Um, Sasan, I'm gonna have you make a copy of this, okay? So here it is for you. I am going to, there you go. Um, click on that link. Oop, I need to share it first. Sorry. Let me share with you first. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Okay. So you should be able to have it. So Iman with an E, you are going to click on the link that I have for you in the chat. And that's going to be a forced copy so that you can see what I am working on in the document. Okay. I see some other thumbs up. So I am gonna put my timer for five minutes. 
Don't worry if you can't complete the whole thing. Five minutes is very, very short for this. Okay. I usually give my kiddos about 20 minutes. So five minutes is all you're going to get because we're in the middle of a training. <laughs> And it can be like, uh, this is what I do with my students. Sometimes like I put them in groups to, to come up with the words mm -hmm. or I, uh, I go with category, category, then it would help me monitor, give them the timing for yeah. different categories. Yes, you could do that too. There are lots of ways that you can do it. Um, so I'm just going to give you five minutes and Amal, I am putting the link in there for you again so that you can edit on my copy without logging in. Okay. And then you can help me with my Arabic words. <laughs> All right. I have, I have a technical question. Like um, when I asked, thank you very much. You sent me the link on the chat. So mm -hmm. I made copy and it worked on my phone screen, but mm -hmm. not on the, on the tablet. So in this case, like, uh, what should I do? Just copy uh, for, and ink or how I do? A tablet, an iPad or a, a just? Like a Surface, I opened the, uh, the iPod near me. I opened it on Surface and I'm looking at you and working with you on the phone, so for Zoom. Okay, um, on the Surface, you should be able to open it. I don't see. Um, or before, but now when you sent me the link, I, uh, I made copy, it worked on my phone screen, not on that uh, tablet, not on which is tablet. okay, but then uh, yeah, I, that's fine. <laughs> that, I, I don't know. We could talk more about the tech stuff after this if you want to stick around, right? Okay, um, thank you very much. Okay, um, so where it says three word sentence, you're just going to try to summarize this photo in three words. So who and what is happening in the picture, okay? We've got about four minutes. Here, Honda pronouns, not not the prepositions. Proposition like he ala poka. Yeah, min ila. Yeah. أعتقد معمول وحلويات هي أسماء وليست adverbs. Adverbs مثل الحال تمام؟ من الأحوال ممكن تحط جدا كثيرا والآن ماشي فحص للغة العربية الآن <تصفيق> Y'all are doing great correcting each other I have no idea what is being typed so it's all good <laughs> so Y'all will be my helper in this Again, اجتماع هي, هي ليست uh, adjective كمان الأدجكتيف <تصفيق> 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 زعيدات منيحه ممتازه متعاونات جيده او تعاون فرحانات فرحات 
فرحات هي كتبت أسرة متعاونة عشان تبين متعاونة وصف للأسرة يا متعاونة آه، أوكي أوكي طيب هيك فإذا أسرة متعاونة سعيدة ليست سعيدات You've got about one more minute. Uh, yeah. Raya, yes, adverbs describes verbs and it also describes adjectives. And conjunctions, مثلاً, يلي بتحسد تحطي ثم وبعد ذلك ما, uh, ولذلك <coughs> هذه ال conjunction في البيت هي propositional phrase. I'm gonna, I'll fix this right over here. نعم أحيانا يكون مختلف قليلا ولكن ما زال الأدجكتيف يعني لن يكون ناون اسم عادة ممكن في after family noun نضيف معمول maybe المعمول أليست بقى هون بقى الكلمة هلا نحن نقول اسم اسم إزت ناون معمول كعك ومعمول نعم كعك ومعمول أضعه تحت الفاميلي تحت الفاميلي لأنه هناك شيء معمول به أيضا فتأتي بمعنى آخر أليس كذلك؟ بس المعمول يعني نحن من الصورة أخذنا المعمول نعم نعم تمام تمام All right so maybe some of y'all heard my timer my timer did go off and so in the chat I had so usually my form is empty right but um, Amala is working on my form for me. So she's written in some words. Um, Amala, if you want to be my super helper and type words in, since I am not able to type in Arabic, sure. those of you who I had asked, oops, sorry about that, to share a word, what I would love for you to do is to start sharing your word. You're, you're like, Valerie, why are you doing this? I am asking you to share because usually I have an empty one that I'm working on, right? And how many of you have asked your kiddos to share something? And then it's just silence. Oh. And then you're just doing the, you're like patiently <clears throat> waiting, right? So generally when my students are doing this in class, my class used to be set up in a double U shape. So it's like a U on the inside and then a U on the outside like this. So it's two U's, right? I just kind of walk through and I was like, ooh, I like your adverb. Can you share that adverb with me? I like your adjective. Can you share that adjective? I like this. And then so when I when we all come back together, I'm like, all right, you know, Hafida, I asked you to share the verb. Can you can you share your verb with me? Okay, so Hafida, go go for it. Share your verb, please. You want me to share my verb? Yes, just tell okay. us what Yamalun al Kak. Yamalun, it's the making the cookies. Oh, Yamalut. So Oops, somebody wrote it in. Thank you very much. Dana, can you share your noun with us? I'm sorry, Thank you So I think that is being written down. Mayada um, Alam, can you please share your conjunction with us? Maya, sorry, uh, uh, salam alaikum. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm working on Saturday. Uh, I was a little bit out. I just came. Oh, uh, and, no worries. Yeah. No worries. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know uh, what are you doing now. I left for 10 minutes and just came back. Okay, yeah. not okay. a problem. Not yeah, a problem okay. at all. Sarah, okay. can you please share a verb with us, please? Assalamu alaikum. Yamaluna, you have the runa, yestamiuna, yakuluna, you are a noun, noun, noun. She said uh, verb or noun? Uh, noun. For Sarah, it was a verb. Oh, you said verb? I'm sorry. Yeah. She yeah. said conjunction. No, I'm, I'm shared the verb. Yeah, I shared all the verbs. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, and we're going to hop down to pronouns. Nadia, can you please share a pronoun with us? It's okay. Fatina, can you please share your pronoun with us? Uh, 
in uh, here. Yeah. Can I share? Yeah, mm -hmm. go for it. Okay, so a pronoun it's like haula. Okay, great. Oops. So you see, we so I would go through and I would basically call on everybody to have things filled out, right? And because I asked them in the chat or because I'd asked them in person, the sharing becomes a whole lot faster and I don't have to wait. And oftentimes I get, but is that right? And I'm like, well, I'm asking you to share it. So I checked it, you're good, you know? So it also boosts the student's confidence, right? Once this is completed in Google Classroom, I have this completed item that with all of the words on the side, I share it back into Google Classroom with them just in case I have some students who don't know what it is, like who don't have the whole thing completed. Now that I have all of these items, is it a lot easier to write a paragraph because I have the words that you have been, you've given that describes this image? Yes. It is, right? Yes. My language is now scaffolded. My students can write. They also have all of their sentence frames from before, right? So I have my sentence frames, but now I also have adjectives that are specific to this image. I have verbs that are specific to this image. And I am not sure if you conjugate in Arabic, but like for in French, like we definitely conjugate, right? So in verbs- It's a lot of conjugation. Oh, it's the noun, Arabic. the verb, the adjective, oh, everything, yes. the pronouns, <laughs> everything we conjugated. So. Oh, yes. Okay, so you're like, Valerie, this is insane to grade. And yes, you would be crazy to want to grade every single item in here. So here's what I do, because I also don't want you to spend forever and a day grading this, right? When I teach this first to my students, one, it's like a fun picture that we use, sometimes a really funny picture. I always grade these out of 10 points. The very first time, if you just complete the whole entire form, I'm not checking, I'm checking for completion. I'm not checking for correctness. I'm checking for completion. You completed all of the boxes, they're filled, and you have a, what looks like a paragraph. You get 10 out of 10. Because I just want them to get used to doing this. This is my encouragement for them. I do this about once a week, okay? So they get used to this process. My second week, same thing, 10 points based on completion. And this time I am reading their paragraphs. I'm asking for volunteers, like who would like to read? My third graders that I got to work with, they're always super shy. They're like, oh, I don't wanna read. They're like, Dr. Sun, you read. So I read to them with a lot of prosody and I model like good reading, right? Like this is a house and in this house, they are, <gasps> They are making these delicious cookies that, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. So I take whatever it is that they're writing and I read it in this like big dramatic sense, right? So they get super excited and they're like, oh my gosh, I want my paper being read or they learn to read like I do, you know? Um, third week in, I'm like, okay, boys and girls, we've been doing this a whole lot. And Today, we're concentrating on verbs. I wanna make sure that you know how to conjugate these verbs. And here is my mini lesson on just verbs. We're gonna conjugate it in the first person singular. So when I am grading now, five of my points goes to completion. Did they do every single item? My next five points, I look only at the verbs. Did they conjugate it correctly? They got the three chances to conjugate correctly, right? And then my other two points, did they use it correctly with the correct conjugation in the paragraph? So I also tell them, I'm like, you know, help Dr. Sun see things better and get your results faster. Help me highlight the verb that you conjugated in the sentence so I could see it right away. 
So not only are they using it correctly in the column itself, they also highlight it so I know that they can determine what the verb is in the sentence that they have written. And so that's where they get the other five points. Super easy grading. I'm only looking for one element at a time. And if they're having a hard time, then I come back and talk about it again. Yeah. Elon, go for you it. know what is helpful? Uh, it is to have a situation. And I like uh, Paul ideas sometimes, or the new ideas is saying, who is the one who is reporting from this picture? Am I describing the picture? Or this lady who's sitting at the, the side, she's talking in her first person. So what are we doing? So it would be this person is talking or this person is sharing or um, a reporter. So when we change these situations, it forces us to change the conjugations. And then it helps the, the, the students see it, uh, how it's used from different perspectives. It's not the like of just the mechanical conjugations. So it helps them in the, I found it that it's more helpful for the students when you put them in a different situations. Yeah, so you can definitely take it in different ways and, and in different perspectives. <laughs> There's just so much you can do, right? Um, but just in terms of grading, you know, make it easy for yourself. The very first time I do this, I started this with third graders because it was the entire form. And it took me 45 minutes from end to end, from going over everything. But I just gave them mini lessons. You know, We did it all together as a class first. So it's like, what's a verb? I was like, verbs are like the actions that you have. Ce sont les actions, you know? Les adverbes. And I was like, les adverbes en français, ils terminent toujours avec M-O-N-T. You know, so I give them little hints here and there about how to use these things, right? So we do them all together the very, very first time because there are some of our kiddos who don't know their nouns from their adjectives or their verbs from their adverbs. And that happens, you know? Um, but the beauty of this is when we do it all together, when I did this consistently, I got to work with these third graders for eight weeks in a row. Um, so I was just there every week. So they knew that I was gonna come in and do this with them and by the end of the eighth week, we were down to like 25 minutes. These third graders were able to write all of the, like put in their words. We were able to talk about the words and write a paragraph all within 25 minutes. I'm like, that's pretty spanking awesome for me and for them as well. And they were excited to share, right? But the best part is like my fourth week in, these third graders, they really, really liked wild animals. So then I chose wild animal, like National Geographic funny pictures for them. My fourth week in, one of my kiddos was like, Dr. Sun, when you're coming with us next week, what's your picture? I was like, well, I don't know yet. He's like, well, I have funny pictures to share. I was like, oh, you do. So I was like, well, we're going to be working on some like whales. Can you help me find a funny picture with whales? Yes. I was like, okay, ask your mom to email me pictures. So guess who did my work for me? Because this is just a framework, right? This is a template. I use the same template every time that I send out to Google Classroom. My template's already done. I just needed to search my picture. I needed to, my time was spent on finding a picture, but now Jude's like helping me find my picture. So Jude got my picture covered for me I just had to check that it was correct, okay? And I made it a big, big deal the following week. I was like, boys and girls, Jude helped me select the picture today. And then, so guess what? After my session with them, they're like, I have pictures to share. So now who's helping me select all the other pictures? I'm like, okay, well now if you have a picture to share, ask your mom and dad to email me, find me some funny animal pictures because I need to make sure I need to approve them, right? So now I have kiddos who are super duper fully invested in finding the pictures for me for my eight parts, you know? And that made my life super easy where they're invested, they're excited to write about it and they also got to, you know, do things in a fun way. So this is eight parts and I realize that it is 1230, um, but you get the gist of this and we get to really work on classroom language. And there are some parts 
that this can really be simplified. Maybe you don't give them all eight parts. Maybe you only work on nouns and adjectives at first, right? Um, you can also just switch it up. It could be like, boys and girls, I have all the words together on the board. Your job is to put them in the right category. So that also lets them use things differently. Or you can say, boys and girls, you're writing your own words this time, but then afterward, oh, you're gonna switch papers with each other. Possible. And then you're gonna write with somebody okay. else. If I do this with the equation, this pops out. This oh. is the right object. This I think somebody, <laughs> my. Um, so lots of different ways to write eight parts. But if you have other questions and you wanna stick around, stick around. I am here to answer your questions for you. And uh, yeah, one one thing uh, before you go, if you have to leave, just we would appreciate. We'll send you a link just to give us a feedback on how we did today and how you much you we liked Valerie and uh, Valerie and her session. So uh, please make sure to complete it. We will send it as an email for uh, all the participants who attended, all the attendees. And it's gonna be very short. So please, please just uh, complete it, okay? It's gonna be two, three questions, okay? Uh, but again, like Valerie, we are still here so we can have entertain a couple of ideas or uh, questions or text things. Um, and actually we wanted to talk about the Arabic uh, day that it's coming next weekend it's on friday and if you can share each one of you can share ideas what you are going to do with your students on this arabic day before you leave it would be great it's going to be enriching for everybody yeah uh, please for, on the chat especially a distant learning now so it's like what do you have an idea to share with your student online i mean yeah. We know so that Valerie, if you have some ideas for us, uh, it's the National Arabic or the, mm -hmm. uh, actually the uh, what's called the United Nation yeah. Arabic Day. It's going to be on, on December 18. Right. Iman, Iman, please, uh, where is the survey that we have to... So I will send it. I will oh, okay. send it. You send it uh, on the it, chat yes. or is it like email? No, no, no. I will email it to you. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Great session, Valerie. We can spend hours and yeah. hours with you, but I'm <laughs> sure we are going to have you again yeah. um, because we love you a lot and you yeah. have a lot of wealth of information. Today, you gave a lot of ideas for kindergarten. I hope that in elementary level, and I think um, beside our team, you know, this is the only guest speaker from outside who gives these ideas for uh, the lower grades and kindergarten because of your expertise. So yeah. thank you. Thank you very, very much.